Hi, right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can close off your accounting period on QuickBooks. Now, the reason you'd like to do this is because you wouldn't want someone to post something or change something in a month that you already had or you closed. So you finalize the month, the auditors have seen it and you don't want to close it. So I'm actually on my way to a client. Um, the client's on the farm and they've closed the year and now they don't want anyone to post on it. But what happened was some people did actually post and that's why there's some headers. So I'm going to show you how you can close the period. I'm on my demo company. So the training company we always go on to, we'll go to our settings. So settings on the top right hand corner and we'll click on account and settings. When you get going account and settings, you will go to the tab which says advanced. If you don't have access to the advanced in settings and if you don't have access to the advanced settings, it means that as a user, you're not an admin user. So only an admin user can close the books which makes sense because if you're not an admin user and you want to open the books up it just won't have any control so to keep control make sure tip number one that only certain staff members preferably the supervisor senior accountant or the cfo depending on the structure of your company and the structure of your accounting department only a few should have admin access and access to the settings page so once you're under the advanced, you'll see the thing says accounting and you'll see a thing called close the books. At the moment, it's turned off. So to turn it on, I will click on this gray area or on the pencil edit button. So I'll click onto it. It says close books. So I would like to turn that on. Currently, what it means is with the books not closed, any person can post or make a transaction at any period or any time meaning they can affect the books no matter what time period it is and you can agree this can be a problem if you have an audited financial statements or if your financial statements has been agreed or if you've reconciled a period and you're happy with everything that has been done you don't want any transactions to change later on so by having this off it means that someone or even a junior staff member can post something and make some incorrect reconciliations and actually change your books. So to avoid that, we're going to turn it on. And once you turn it on, it gives you a few options. The first option it asks you is, what period would you like to make it the closing date? Now, I'll talk later about how to choose the periods, but for now, let's make it the financial year end. So financial year end, which is the 28th of February, 2021. What else it asks you is, do you want to close the books with just having it a viewing a warning? We'll go through that one. Or would you like it to show a password or require a password? Now, if you choose the second one, which I recommend, because that gives you actual full control, then you'll choose the second one, meaning that you'll have to put a password inside. So what happens if you lose this password? Put a password inside? If you lose this password, no. it just means that you I'll will talk have later to go on about what happens if you lose page. this password. Okay. Um, so I'm saving. I'm saving everything. And there comes our first problem. And this is one of the reasons why many people don't close with the books. If there's an error in your stock, you can agree with me, you can't have negative stock. It's not possible. Physically, it's not possible. So what QuickBooks is saying is, please turn and make sure your stock balance is on at least a zero because it is aware that you're going to be making a stock adjustment. So just take note of that. Um, so because of that, I'm unable to close this period. I will have to first fix that stock figure. I have a more in-depth video on how to fix stock, um, especially on our QuickBooks course. So if you do the QuickBooks course, I go more in-depth in how you can actually handle your stock and some tips and tricks on that. But I will be making more future videos or if I have made them already, they'll be up on the screen. So let's choose another time period and let's make it 2020 May. So 31st of May 2020 and let's save it. Now that it's saved, anything that I post before this date or any transaction I create before this date that influences this date, it won't allow it to post. So let's give an example. I'm going to go to create a new bill. So let's just say I got a bill in the post, I have to pay a supplier and the 
supply came in the post and I better pay fast cars. And the bill was, let's make it before the, that May 2020. So the bill was before March. This was March 2020 and the bill number was, let's call it old. And what did we pay fast, fast cars for? We paid them for fuel or let's see, fuel. And the description was an old invoice for fuel. And you pay them 100 then. I'm not sure how much fuel you can get for 100 then, but that's 100 bucks we got there. And I'm gonna save this. Immediately what's gonna happen is, it's gonna say this transaction is before the closing date. Meaning, you've closed with your books. For this transaction to work, you'll have to key in a password. And that's the password we had in the beginning. So it's important that you only a certain few with the top management in the accounting team has this password or else anyone can then just post on it. So if I put in the password, it will allow me to post it and to allow me to have the transaction. Okay, and that's what happens. It posted. Now the second option you have in closing your books is you can have an option where it just gives you a warning. I'm gonna show you how that warning looks and why it might be beneficial. So I'm just gonna change the settings. I'm gonna go back to settings, account and settings. Once again, go to advanced. And I'm gonna say close my books. And I'm gonna change this to allow changes, but please just give a warning. So what happens now is, if I go to new, and let's just do an expense this time. I'm gonna choose an expense. Hey, please look out for my video on top about what's the difference between an expense and what is a bill. That's one of the questions I get asked quite often and it can be somewhat confusing. So let's just say this time it was the painters. We paid the painters and this was repair the maintenance and we paid them 100 Rand. So what happens now is I'm going to choose that date, also the 1st of March. So it's also before the period of the close period. I'm going to say save and what happens now is it says this last action was on your card before the closing date. Are you sure you want to save? You see it gives you a warning. What that means is if you don't have a password you can still post on it. Now what's the difference between the two and why would you use it? And also what period should you and how often should you close the period? In my example what I always advise clients is Look at when last your items was reconciled. So the last time your items was reconciled, your bank reconciliation or your supplier statements, if that was reconciled, you know your QuickBooks is correct. So essentially you should actually close the period then. Okay. When should you use a warning? Um, and when should you not ever close the period? That it's also there's sometimes you don't want to close the period. And that happens when you first start your QuickBooks account and you have a backlog. So you have an accountant or you're doing it yourself and you've got this backlog of transactions and you are, let's just say in the month of November, it's November 2021, but you haven't yet even done the last year's books. So if you're gonna close the period of year in Feb 2021, because your books should have been done, we can agree, but it isn't done. You still got a backlog of stuff of last year. Then every time to push in the password and press the password can be painful and to avoid that, you rather just have the period open and once it's finalized, then close the period. Once the year end is finalized, that's the time you close it. And depending how often you reconcile. So as a, you should have a policy in your business that you'd like your accounting staff to reconcile all the transactions every month or at least every quarter. And at the end of each quarter, that's best practice to at least then close the books once obviously everything is reconciled. If you close the books, if in the quarter, and there's still some items that must be reconciled. So you go to reconciliation. Um, I've got a video on how to reconcile, by the way. So if you go to reconcile and you reconcile the bank account, and you've got a certain stuff on the reconciliation that's in difference. So you've got a few differences, but you kind of reconciled it. You just know there's about one or two items that must still be done. In that case, you can just put a warning. So you can let the staff know that, please guys, 
don't post anything in this period um, unless it relates to these items that must still be reconciled. Um, what helps then is that it will encourage the staff members to fix the mistake or find the error. Um, and if you're on leave or something and someone doesn't have the password, at least they can't use the excuse that they didn't know the password to fix the error. So that's one example you'd like to use the warning. But it can happen that someone found the password or you yourself made a mistake. Now, how do you find that mistake and what's the best practice and how do you, where do you start? So the starting point on that would be, and this is a great tip I'm giving you guys, and this has helped me a lot, is to know when the transaction was posted. So the first way you can do that is you can go to the settings page and you can go to audit log. That's the one way. I speak about the audit log in another video, but for now I'm going to show you a, a, a much easier way or a, a easier way that I believe is much more easily relevant for this type of scenario where you've seen something change in the bank or seen something change on some account and you just can't find out why and where the change came about. And this can happen often when you do a VAT return. So a VAT return is something that I do every second month um, yeah, or every month depending on the type of business you have. And if you have changes in a VAT report, it's going to mess up your whole reconciliation with SARS. So the way I do that is by doing a report, going to the report that's required. So in our case, I don't want to go to the VAT report now, I'd rather go to the profit and loss report. So if I go to the profit and loss report, and I go all to all my dates, and I say run the report, let's just say there's something wrong on my, the fuel. You can give me a change of the fuel. So let's go to the fuel. Now, because only two transactions, we know that it's this one here that was done old and I named it old. But in your case, no one's going to tell you they changed it and you're going to have much more transactions. So the way you do this is you go to this settings page of the settings of the viewing and you go and you say, please show me the date that this was created. Let me know who created it and let me know who last made it, modified it and the last modified by who. So this gives you when it was created and when it was last changed and who changed it. So if I click at the viewing options now, you'll see it gives you the timestamp of when the transaction actually was created. Now, if this is the 1st of March 2020 and we know we closed the period off in whenever that whenever if it was finalized it was definitely not in december we maybe finalized it in november so every transaction date that happens in the month of december or after november means that that shouldn't have been that's where the changes occurred and you can see who created it and who changed it this is going to help you a lot when it comes to reviewing your reports especially you have a big team and you can't diagnose where the changes happened. So that's the one way if you know what account it went on. If you don't know what account it went on, the second way to do it is you go to all your transactions. So what's nice about QuickBooks is it's got a, some great reports and what I like to use is the transaction list by date. And if you do the transaction list by date and you click on all dates, you do the same same filtering or display the same settings which is your created by the created date the last modified and the last modified by now what makes this easier is a little bit a little bit tricky when it comes to um, QuickBooks you're unable to sort this by the date and last modified well at least that's what I'm aware of and that's what I've seen since then I haven't it changed it let's just see if they did yeah, it's still like that. So as of 2022, 2021, you are unable to sort by the date. So what I suggest is exporting that all transactions to Excel and then do a Excel sorting according to date and then you can identify all the items that was done after the closing. Yeah, so after showing that video, it's got a little bit cold, so I put a jacket on and another jersey. Yes, you look how nice this tree looks. Amazing. Look at that tree. Look at that colors. Amazing. If you're looking for more learnings on QuickBooks, we built a course. Those in business, 
business owners, but especially the staff. If you've got staff and you want to upskill them on QuickBooks, we've got a formal course. And subscribe to our channel. We're always putting out content and we're putting out much more content now in 2022.